Ten years after the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, Nippon TV used state of the art technology to reprocess videos of the hydrogen explosions to prompt new theories about them. After a 40 minute walk on a mountain trail, we arrived at a steel tower with a local TV station's camera installed on it. The plant operated by Tokyo Electric Power can be seen through a grove of trees. Fukushima Central TV's camera was filming the plant when the nuclear accident occurred in March 2011. The distance to the facility is about 17 kilometers. A day after the Great East Japan earthquake struck, the number one reactor exploded. This is the only footage that captured the incident. The world watched in awe as the shocking sight unfolded. Two days later, the number three reactor also exploded. The shape and color of the smoke looked very different from those of Unit 1. Many watched helplessly at the carnage. The devastating events were occurring just several hundred kilometers northeast of Tokyo. The Japanese government, lawmakers, and other entities have conducted numerous surveys on the incident. But none of them had closely analyzed the explosion of Unit 3. No one knew what constituted the black smoke that rose high up in the air. Nearly 10 years after the disasters occurred, Nippon TV used cutting-edge technology to reprocess the videos taken by Fukushima Central TV. The original footage appears whitish and the outlines are not very clear. We took this image of the smoke and processed it to sharpen the outlines. The processed image shows things that appear to be debris in the air more clearly. Technicians use the white and light blue paint on the reactor building as base colors in reprocessing the original video. After a series of procedures, the image became much clearer. Technicians also doubled the number of frames to show moments that weren't initially captured. Nippon TV provided the reprocessed video to Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority. The body's verification team is using it as additional data for analyses and study of the accident. Team members were able to see the first instance of the explosion that had not been visible earlier. In the original video, the first site of fire appeared above the reactor building. The reprocessed video shows the fire first appearing a bit lower on the right side of the building, just before the rooftop blast. When the initial fire appeared, the building slanted to the left. We reenacted what appears to have happened to the building using computer graphics. This was likely caused by some great force created when the fire broke out. The reprocessed video was the first to indicate the possibility that the fire initially came out from the fourth floor of the five story building. This man used to serve as Secretary General of the Nuclear Regulation Authority. 
He led the operation to deal with the nuclear accident at the time it occurred. Massive amounts of hydrogen were released inside the reactor building. As hydrogen is light, experts thought it accumulated on the top floor and a hydrogen explosion occurred there. But analysis of the reprocessed video led to a new hypothesis that a fire broke out on the fourth floor. That was immediately followed by a series of explosions and combustions. This new piece of information came to light after 10 years. An on-site survey of the reactor supported this idea. Last year, the government's verification team went into the third floor of the number three reactor. Alarms were going off to warn of high radioactive levels. The explosion may have occurred just above this area. The bottom of the fourth floor was visible on the ceiling. The explosion likely caused the floor to collapse, bending and uncovering the beams. This backs the hypothesis that the initial explosion was on the fourth floor. We asked verification team members what the significance was of reviewing the video a decade after the disaster. Power companies in Japan have been stepping up the safety features of their nuclear power plants in the hopes of resuming their operation. This is TEPCO's plant in central Japan. It is equipped with a device to remove hydrogen from the topmost floor. But we have seen that a hydrogen explosion could occur on a lower floor. This new revelation may prompt revisions in current safety measures. The reprocessed video also offered clues into this black smoke. Just after the accident, the ground self-defense forces weapons defense unit was just outside the number three reactor, preparing to inject water to prevent an explosion. Four of the six unit members dispatched there were injured. The town of Futaba was deserted as nearby residents had evacuated. A firefighter remembers the moment of explosion. The explosion sent black smoke rising up to about 270 meters in the air. Gigantic pieces of debris became visible in the reprocessed video. We calculated the size of the debris. The exhaust stack by the reactor is around 120 meters tall. Compared with that, the largest visible debris is estimated to be about 32 meters long. The building next to Unit 3 had a large hole. 
It measured 14 meters by 11 meters, much larger than the fire engines nearby. This footage was taken three months after the accident occurred. A big piece of concrete can be seen near the number three reactor. Why was the explosion of Unit 3 much more forceful than that at Unit 1? The government's verification team mentioned the possibility of a fireball. The team compiled a report alluding to flammable gas that likely underwent combustion as it rose with propulsive force. In February, we visited Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station. The facility was crowded with countless numbers of tanks storing treated water. We went inside the number five reactor, which was offline in March 2011. We changed into protective gear and went inside the containment vessel. We moved to an area just under the pressure vessel. As the temperature rose inside Unit 3, the cables and paint on the containment vessel walls likely produced the flammable gas. The combustible gas is believed to have leaked out of the containment vessel along with hydrogen. It then caught fire and propelled upward, pushing up large pieces of debris. The Nuclear Regulation Authority came up with a new report including its assessment of the video reprocessed by Nippon TV. The document says further analysis will be conducted to find out what exactly made up the black smoke. Meanwhile, the operator of the plant has not yet conducted a detailed study into the accident. The Nuclear Regulation Authority's chairman criticized TEPCO's stance. We asked TEPCO whether it intends to take a more proactive role in surveying the accident. The official did not elaborate on what he meant by the words taking the initiative. Ten years may seem like a long time, but it is only a fraction of the time needed to decommission Fukushima Daiichi.